romance. It's almost Valentine's Day, and for those of you, me included, who are hopeless romantics, this can be a really amazing time of the year, and it also could be a colossal disappointment. Well, let me tell you, this whole video is all about romantic relationships, and I'm going to give you some of my insight. You can take it with a grain of salt. You can use it. It's entirely up to you. But from my perspective, I think I have things pretty figured out. And how do I know that I have things pretty figured out? Because I'm getting the results that I want in my life as far as romance goes. Now, what we don't know about Valentine's Day, besides it being tremendously over-commercialized, is that every day of the year can be Valentine's Day. And you don't actually have to be in a committed relationship or dating someone or, or in love with someone to actually celebrate this time of year. Because at the end of the day, your number one relationship is the one that you have with yourself. So even if you are in a committed relationship, and this is a romantic time of the year for you in a partnership, I'd like to invite you to step back from all of the hoopla -la around what needs to happen on February the 14th and take some time to acknowledge the relationship that you have with yourself. It is the most powerful tool that you could ever do. When Jerry Maguire's movie came out, when the movie Jerry Maguire came out, and there was that, that infamous scene in the elevator where they were signing back and forth to each other, this young couple completely enamored and in love with each other, and they were signing back and forth to each other, and the sign language was, you complete me. I just kind of rolled my eyes <laughs> because there's no such thing as someone completing you. Some of the greatest relationships stir up the most, I don't want to call it conflict, but awareness around how you can grow. So if you're looking for one of those harmonious relationships that never really challenges you, that you can just kind of go through the motions and everything looks really good on the surface, then that's really only one kind of romantic relationship. There's a lot of relationships that actually stir the pot and really get you to look at yourself that probably are of the greatest benefit. Now, the challenge in this is right here. So if you're in a relationship with someone, if you're in love with somebody and you've got this like energy thing going on back and forth between the two of you and they push your buttons and they challenge you to grow and they don't let you play small, they won't accept that from you when you make excuses and you defend your limitations about why you can't be more, why you can't have more, why you can't do more, and you think, oh my gosh, all I want to do is just get away from you because you annoy me, you just, you don't like me for who I am, you don't accept me for who I am, and you're always trying to change me. Isn't that just the rhetoric? The truth is, is that if what they're bringing to the table is the truth, then they could quite probably be the biggest gift that the universe has ever given you. So as you're rolling into this romantic time of the year, being it's the week of St. Valentine's Day, if you're single, spend some time with yourself and really do a reflection on how the relationship dynamic between you and you works. Yesterday, I was having this really incredible day. And, you know, our answers and epiphanies and um, growth always comes from the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves. So, 
If you're asking yourself, like, what's wrong with me? How come I can't get into a relationship? How come I start dating people and they don't stick around? If you're asking yourself those kinds of questions, then those are the kinds of people that are going to be drawn toward you. Because our words create our reality and they are like a magic wand weaving the energy of our physical experiences in advance. So it's like a way of pre-paving what you would like to have come toward you. I used to have this neighbor that would go for dog walks with me. So we both had dogs and we'd meet up at the end of the block and we'd walk our dogs together. And this was a lady that was, um, I guess you could say a little bit jaded when it came to the dating world in Los Angeles and, and, and Beverly Hills. And um, her, her monologue was, all the great men are married, all the uh, men that she's interested in want to have kids and she doesn't want to have kids, so that's the end of the relationship. She can't date older men because they have too many um, past relationship problems, issues, baggage, ex-wives, children, grandchildren. She can't date younger men because younger men don't appreciate older women and they all want to have children and she doesn't want to have children. That, you know, the list just goes on and on and on. And this was a woman that was in a serious drought. And no wonder, because that was her mantra. So I tried to get her to change her mantra around that because none of that is true, by the way. Um, and she just wasn't having it. So it was like the parting way for us in our relationship, which really isn't that much different than in a romantic relationship. So when you get into a relationship with someone, the first thing you wanna look at besides the obvious, and that means the obvious criteria that is important to you about another person, once you get past that and you decide to have a relationship with them, you really want to look at the values between the two of you and do you have values that connect? And this sometimes is the challenge and it really depends on your programming from zero to seven in terms of how you saw your parents relating in their marriage, in their relationship, did they stick together? How respectful were they of one another? How much space did they give each other to have their own opinions, their own points of view, their own model of the world? And then more importantly, what were their points of connection? Because when you first get into a relationship with someone, you have an immediate point of connection, or maybe there's several points of connection that come up immediately. So as the relationship evolves and those points of connection start to get stale and start to get old, then the question is, how much further can you go with your points of connection? And what new points of connection can you create together? So values are really the, um, the mainstay for that. And you might want to actually sit down and discuss your values, list them out separately on paper, and then share that later once you've gone through them together. And what I teach in my value solicitation with a business when we're developing their value proposition could be the absolute, well, it is the absolute same process that you could use in this exercise because values are values, whether it's for a company or whether it's for a romantic partnership. The most important thing to determine right from the get-go before you get in too deep is the long haul. Now, there's kind of a combination of energies that need to be attended to here. The first one is, in the short term, 
what is it that you would like to have with this person? And then in the long term, what would you like, if anything, to have with this person? Because it's really important to be clear. It's important to be honest. It's important to be upfront. Unless, of course, you're just having, you know, a tryst, which is fine. Everybody's got to take care of business, right? But past that, we're talking about a relationship that can go through the changes that each individual experiences in life because we're all constantly evolving and changing. And then to determine what you're going to do beyond this set of points of connection to continue to develop new points of connection to move the relationship along a path that is natural and has flow to it and is inspiring. When that takes place, then if that other person's points of view or opinions have the tendency to push your buttons and you know you want to hold on to control or or you don't want to change, maybe you don't want to grow, you don't want to evolve, then you, you can find ways of moving through that together. Now, I did about 10 year run of couples coaching. And so I'm gonna share with you some of the things that came across my desk, if you will, when I was working with couples. And so the first thing I would say to them when they would sign up for a series with me around couples coaching was the number one question was, are, is this relationship worth saving? And the answer that I got both non-verbally and verbally in that moment was really whether I moved forward with them or not, because if they weren't willing to save the relationship or if they didn't each individually on their own think the relationship was worth saving then there really was no point of going forward now you're probably thinking well who would engage in couples coaching if they don't think their relationship was worth saving lots of people trust me the people that want to be right the people who want to prove a point the people that can't seem to get closure you know whatever the case happens to be everybody has their own motivation around something like that. So that was the number one question. And then number two, we would sit down together and we would do a value solicitation to see where they're at on some pretty pivotal points, such as religion or non-religion, children or no children, money. You know, each person in this world has their own relationship to money and how each person related to money and then brought that relationship to money into the relationship dynamic is, is, is huge. Then we would look at things like career paths, you know, self-employed versus uh, corporate employee. Not everybody is risk adverse and not everybody is comfortable you know, with, with not taking risk, you know, some people just love it. They get a high off of it. They get, that's their, that's their kryptonite. So when you put someone in a relationship that is really keen on that and it conflicts with the other person's conservatism, you really have to find some middle ground on that. We would also look at global travel or where they wanted to live, how they wanted to live. Did it include the in-laws? A lot of cultures include in-laws. So all of these different points of view and models of the real world are really critical to seeing how far you can take this relationship. So as you get together for this wonderful 2020 Valentine's Day, you might want to take into consideration, first of all, the relationship that you have with yourself. And if you're single, go romance yourself. Take yourself out for a nice activity. It doesn't have to be a traditional dinner and that foo-foo stuff. 
I like foo-foo stuff too, so it's not a criticism. But it could be just an, an activity that you enjoy doing for yourself over the course of the weekend. But do something special for yourself if you're single. And if you are in a relationship and you do want to celebrate St. Patrick's Day together, then make an attempt to, to bring something to the table that you know that your partner really enjoys. Instead of making it be something that you want the two of you to do, if you bring to the table what you know they would enjoy, and they bring to the table what they know you would enjoy, now you're gonna have an absolutely beautiful and romantic Valentine's Day. So, with that said, I wish you much love, much peace in your relationship, much harmony, and expansion and growth and blessings. Whether that's a relationship with another person or that's you romancing you. This is Deborah Peters. Thank you so much for subscribing, for liking, for sharing and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so that you get a little notice next time I upload my next video. Have a blessed day.